What is one phrase or sentence that genuinely changed your life? And then I remember that life will go on, whether I choose to board the train or stay on the from a poetry book I read years ago. You have a 100% track record of getting through bad days. How you spend your days is how you spend your my perspective FS. Don't become a public success and a private failure. Hearing that early on when I first started working has made me always prioritize a decent work-life balance. It rings true especially now as I'm getting older and seeing a lot of people in my field who didn't do that for various reasons, and they complain about their home life being in disarray but they're amazing at work. Give yourself the compassion that he always gave you unconditionally. I don't know yet if it's changed my life, but it changed the way I'm dealing with the world after the death of my husband. You don't want to die, you just don't want to live your current life anymore. My therapist told me this when I was truly struggling back in 2017. I needed help, but on the evaluations at the beginning of each session I couldn't bring myself to put down that I was suicidal because it didn't feel right. I was an absolute well of panic and misery but suicide just seemed so a permanent. That woman honest to a worked with me through everything, plateaus in mental state and all, and helped me reshape my life to be healthier for me. Help me realize you can reinvent your life whenever you want. I still get flight feelings where I just want to abandon everything. I just handle them 1000 times healthier than I did then. Being an introvert, I've always been hesitant to speak up at work and verbalize my opinions. I always felt like what I had to say surely was wrong and I'd let the more important people is totally at odds with the fact that I am one of the top performers in my department and my senior managers have always raved about my work. I've just never had the confidence to I kept all my thoughts and ideas up in my day my direct manager told me something in a casual conversation that Bloom I said, just because they are right doesn't mean that you are thought about that so deeply for the next few days and it really helped me to start speaking up and sharing my thoughts. That was a few years ago. I've never looked back from that. My confidence has grown so much since that I don't think twice to speak up now and I don't even feel bad if my idea is. Cause at least I contributed to the conversation. I was listening to a guided meditation and one of the exercises was to imagine loving yourself entirely. What would that consist of? What would it look like? I envisioned myself laying in my lap, and I was playing with her hair. Seeing her from the outside caused me to have a revelation why did I hate myself so much? Why didn't I think I was worthy of good things? This exercise allowed me to view myself in such a different way. I am a good human, and I deserve the powerful love I give to others. If it's not a yes, it's a no. That goes for jobs, relationships or anything else I'm presented with. Hasn't failed me yet. You are the company you was graffiti, and I saw it from a bus. At the time I was an addict, alcoholic, very very messed up and my associates were all the same and or petty crooks. It made me think and here I am six years later clean, sober, got a job. You teach people how to treat you. Don't push away your anger, sadness, and pain. Make space for these things. Acknowledge them, walk beside them, walk with them, give them a place in your I was in a yoga class and that one just unexpectedly floored me. The concept of walking with negative feelings is something that never even crossed my mind instead of ignoring them, hiding them till they went away, bottling them up till they exploded, being ashamed of them, or trying to deal with them with toxic positivity. Like, it's okay to feel these things. Acknowledge, process, because it's okay they exist. Such an utterly calming way of going about it. Asterisk asterisk, if you live, you may yet have good fortune. But all the dead are dead line from Lewis in one of the Narnia books kept me interested enough in what my future might hold that I kept living through all the times I didn't want to. Dead would be final, but life had the possibility of getting better. I'd recite this line to myself when I had no desire to go on. And spoiler alert, I have found so much asterisk good fortune. Your first thought is what you've been conditioned to think. Your second thought is who you are, which helped me understand why and be more forgiving of myself in instances where my first thought was a negative stereotype, despite knowing that those things are usually wrong and, you are the average of the people you surround yourself with, so surround yourself with people who you admire, who inspire you, who challenge you, surround yourself with people who you would like to be like, which helped me cut toxic people out of my life because I didn't want to unconsciously start emulating their harmful behaviors, beliefs.
If you don't set the boundaries, someone will set them for you. Time will pass either way so you must as well do it. I finished my BS and med. Worrying about something just means you suffer twice. First when you worry, second when it happens. Boundaries are not what we tell others not to do, boundaries are what we tell others we will boundary isn't don't be rude to me, it's if you talk to me like that I will end this conversation, you can't control what others do, only how you react to it. If you don't take a break it will take itself. Do something now that your future self will thank you for. If you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. Be nice, but take no via post-it note by my mum, attached to a paperweight she gifted me when I landed my first office. Don't take advice from people who don't have what you it's helped me out the junk and input people tell you when you're trying to navigate your own path. You're breaking your own heart by expecting more from people who show you who they truly is a thief of joy, love isn't pain, codependency. Holding a grudge is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Shit's not that dumb but I remember someone telling me this like it was their life motto, and I hear them say it every time I feel worked up about something. I am responsible for my own on the same note. Nobody is going to care about you as much as you applies to so many things that help me focus my energy on bettering myself. For example, I have to be accountable for my own actions, celebrate my own accomplishments and be my own biggest cheerleader. It sounds a bit crass, but it helps me not make excuses for myself, and pushes me towards making decisions that'll take me to where I want to be. If you can't hide it, point to your awkwardness. Laugh at your embarrassing mistakes. Don't be ashamed of anything, unless you did something truly bad, of course. We all do awkward and clumsy, trying to hide it only makes it worse. You are depressed because your life is from a doctor when I said my medication wasn't me permission to look at my life critically. My marriage wasn't failing because I was a depressed failure. Consider my depression a symptom of a failing got much, much better when I made some. There's no amount of anxiety that will change what's going to happen. You don't need to deep clean your house every day for it to be considered clean. Literally never realized people were probably deep cleaned once every week or two weeks, but just had a surface level of cleanliness. It stressed me out so much when I started living on my own and I just felt like I wasn't good enough as a human. I started living in mess because it was so overwhelming which made it so much worse. Don't be and before I do anything I ask myself, would an idiot do that? And if the answer is yes, I do not do that. The only person upset by you setting a boundary, is the one who most benefits from you not having any. Not my circus, not my. Your mind believes what you tell it, so tell it positive things. Never give up on yourself. Extreme independence is a trauma response. I'd always been proud of my independence and the fact that I didn't need anyone else. It was really hard to accept the fact that it came from the fact that I learned early on that people aren't to be trusted and will always betray you. I'm honestly, still coming to terms with it. I let my husband and my daughter in, but everyone else I keep at arm's length. No, is a complete. You have no control over how people see you, so you may as well just be yourself. More than one thing can be true. If your absence doesn't bother them, your presence never mattered to them, I've always struggled with having to be the one to always reach out and make plans with friends. I'm a giver, I do whatever I can to be there for my friends and make them comfortable, but I've yet to have a friend who truly is that for me. It's upsetting, I'm 21F and have always felt like I've had no friends, even when I'm told I do, because no one is ever truly there for me. My therapist said this to me a few years ago and for some reason it's helped me be more content with myself. Obviously not 100% but I've learned that I'm the only that that will always be here for myself and to treat myself how I've wanted others to. Even a bad day is just 24 hours. You made a mistake because you're human. It's okay to want to be. This too shall pass. There are such things as coincidences my therapist. This one is a little more personal, but when my partner said, will you move to Australia with me? And it's genuinely changed my life, closely followed by when he asking me to marry him. Apart from those, I've always loved the saying, 
You can't change the wind, but you can change the sails.